I'm Casey Henry and welcome to The Murphy Method. The song that we're going to take up for today is one that is recorded on the Songs of Our Native Daughters CD project. This is called Polly Ann's Hammer and it was written by two of the women who appear on this project, Amethyst Kia and Allison Russell. And this song tells the story of Polly Ann who is married to John Henry. She makes kind of a cameo appearances in a lot of other John Henry songs. We hear that she drives steel like a man. So with this song, um, they turn the story around and tell it from Polly Ann's point of view. I was really, really taken with the song when I heard it, learned it, have performed it, and have taught it to my uh, banjo students. Um, we're not really going to be concerned with the singing of it here in this lesson because I'm going to teach the banjo part to it. On the recording, it's played on Clawhammer banjo. So this arrangement is my attempt to capture the feel and the rhythm of the claw hammer banjo, but in a three finger Scruggs style. Now they recorded it in the key of D. Um, <coughs> so that is where we're gonna be learning it. So your banjo is gonna be in drop C tuning, capoed at the second fret. So after I play it through, I'll explain how to get your banjo into the correct tuning for this. So this is a pretty hard arrangement. This is my own arrangement that I made up. I haven't simplified it at all for the teaching of it. I'm gonna treat this song as if it has an A part and a B part, which are both played through twice. So we're gonna um, learn both parts. And on the CD, the singing, the verse, the verses, it doesn't have a chorus, it just says verses. The verses occupy, or they use the same melody as <coughs> what we're playing for the A part. They also play the B part on the CD, but instrumentally and in between the verses. Um, the arrangement of it is a bit different on the CD from some live versions that I have seen, uh, both Amethyst Kia performing it solo and at a um, Songs of Our Native Daughters show where they were all performing. They rejiggered the arrangement a little bit for live performance, um, where it's a little bit easier to see the AABB structure because they start right off the song by playing the whole entire tune through in the live versions where you don't get that on the CD. Um, so we're just going to learn it straight through as a tune, A parts, B parts, and first let me play it through for you. I'll play it through up to tempo then I'll slow it down and then we'll break apart and take a look at it. So here we go with Polly Ann Sammer. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, before we jump into this tune, <laughs> let me explain to you how to get your banjo into this drop C tuning. So it's easiest to drop the fourth string down before you put your capo on. So assuming you're uncapoed right now, from standard G tuning, the only string you're gonna change is your fourth string. You're gonna tune the fourth string down to a C note. Everything else stays the same. <clears throat> Once you have got that fourth string at a C note, you wanna put your capo on at the second fret. And also remember to spike your fifth string at the seventh fret to an A note. We're going to be playing out of C position, so this will put us in the key of D. Now, once you're capoed, you have to recheck all your strings, of course, to make sure that they're in tune. So now once you're capoed, your fourth string, because it's dropped down, now is a D note. So your fourth string is a D, your third string will be an A, your second string will be a C sharp, and your first string will be an E. And then of course your fifth string, we already said, is an A because it is spiked at the seventh fret. Okay, so this is gonna be our home base, a two finger C chord, index on first fret of second string, ring on second fret of first string. <clears throat> we leave the fourth string open because it's that nice low D note, the tonic of our chord. So. We're gonna start in with the A part. So here's our A part one time through. into four phrases. Our first phrase is this much. We're going to start with two pickup notes. So remember you are holding down your two finger C chord here. Our pickup notes are on the third string. Open third, second fret on third, which will be fretted with your middle finger there. You can pick both of those with your thumb. And then the downbeat comes on the next lick. So you're gonna play the second string followed by a fifth. And then we're gonna slide <coughs> also on the second string from the second fret counting from the capo, of course, since we're capo. Second fret up to the fifth fret, which is the real seventh fret. So it looks a little bit different. I'm gonna try and count from the capo just to keep it consistent. So you wanna put your middle finger down on the second fret of the second string there. Slide up to the fifth fret, counting from the capo. So it's. Now, although the slide is on the second string, we're gonna bring our ring finger along with us. So it is now going to be at the um, fifth fret of the first string. So you have a little two finger C chord here. And we're gonna do fill in rolls. Okay, it's actually just one fill and roll. Five, two, one, five. So. With the pickup notes on the front. Next lick. So all of these are eighth notes, <laughs> just individual notes. We're gonna slide on the second string from four to five, counting from the capo. Play the open first, first fret on second. Then we have a slide on the fourth string. This is slide from the second fret up to the fourth fret. And then we're gonna play open three, open four. So that's a long string of individual notes. fill-in rolls on the end of this as well. <coughs> Back in your C chord, it's just two forward rolls, five, three, one, five, three, one. <coughs> so we're gonna attach those on. And that's where we end our first phrase. 
Let's play it from the pickup notes. Three, four, one, two. Okay, our second phrase. So here we have two separate licks with the same fill-in notes following each lick. Here's the first lick. So we're hammering on to the second fret of the third string. Use your middle finger to hammer on. Pick it when it's open and then hammer down on the second fret. Play the second string. And then we're also going to hammer down onto the um, second fret of the first string. So pick your ring finger up and hammer it back down on the second fret. So. And now here is our fill and roll. <clears throat> so these are rolls of 5 2 1. There are three of them starting and ending on the fifth string. So when you hook it to the lick, it should be. And then we're going to do this. So this starts with a pull off from the second fret of the first to the open first. Just pull your ring finger off the string right there, play the second string, <clears throat> and then hammer your ring finger back down onto the second fret of the first. So that's the figure. And then you do the same set of three forward fill in rolls. So. So let's put together these two halves of our second phrase. Okay, now let's back up and put it with the first phrase. So starting from the top. One, two. Okay, our third phrase is actually the same as the first phrase, but we're changing the pickup notes to get into it. Here's what it sounds like. So here are the new pickup notes. So we start off with a pull off from the second fret of the first to the open first. And then play the second string, which is, of course, fretted at the first fret. And then the second fret of the third, fretting that with your middle finger. So it's... And now, this is a pretty quick little lick. When this song gets cranked up, it goes pretty fast. And this is sometimes uh, tricky to get in there uh, fast enough. Um, but nevertheless, this is how I played it. And from here on out, third phrase is exactly the same as the first phrase. Okay, so now that we know that, let's add that on and play from the beginning. So first three phrases. One, two. Okay, our fourth phrase in the A part. 
So this one starts with a slide on the third string. From the second fret up to the fourth fret of the third, fret it with your middle finger. Play the open second and then the open first. So. And then we have these hammers. <clears throat> so this is really just your standard Foggy Mountain breakdown place to hammer. It's from the second fret to the third fret of the second string. So index finger, fret second fret, <coughs> hammering down onto the third fret with your middle finger. And we just have one hammer, so you're gonna pick two, one. Hammering, of course, when you play that second string. Then keep your middle finger down on the second string for a forward roll. Five, two, one, five. So. Okay, so let's add that to what we had. Next lick. So you still have your middle finger down on the third fret of the second string. Add your index finger on the second fret of the first string, and here's the roll we're gonna do. So this is one, two, one, five. Then we change left hand position to fret just the second fret of the third string with your middle finger. And here we're doing a backward roll, one, two, three, one. So. Okay, let's add that on to what we had from the rest of the phrase. And then we're going to resolve all this with a C tag lick. <clears throat> if you've done any playing at all in C position, you probably already know this lick. Um, the downbeat is a first fret on the second string. So you have your C chord down, play the second string. That's an eighth note, it's got a pause after it. And then you're going to do this roll. So this is five, two, one, two. Then middle finger goes down onto second fret of third. And with that down, you're gonna play three, one, two. So hook those two rolls together. And then onto the end of this, we are just gonna put a fifth string. That's for fill-in as we're uh, leading into the second A part. So the whole lick, adding back on the second string that started the lick. Okay, now let's put that on to the end of our fourth phrase. us the entire A part so let's back up and play this whole thing here we go one two Okay, now in the course of the song, we will play the A part for a second time. We don't need to change anything. We even keep the pickup notes the same. So let's do that now, playing through the A part. This is our second A part.
Okay, now we're ready to take a look at the B part, which is going to sound like this. this B part into four phrases. So our first phrase is this much. Here's the first lick. So the first two notes in this lick, the slide and fifth string, they are pickup notes to the downbeat of the B part, just so you can kind of have the timing clear in your head. <clears throat> so this is the same slide that we used earlier in the A part. We are sliding from the second fret up to the fifth fret of the second string. So use your middle finger to fret that. Play the fifth string when you get there. So those are the two pickup notes. And then the downbeat comes right here. So this lick has a lot of the same note. We're gonna play one, five, one. And then we have a fill in roll of five, two, one, five, one. So it's important to keep all those ones and fives straight so that your roll works out correctly. So we got one, five, one. Those three are eighth notes, and then the roll of five, two, one, five, one, which are just your regular sixteenth notes. Okay, so let's attach the slide to the beginning of that. So we've got okay, second leg. So up here at our two finger. Um, fifth fret chord. We're going to stick your little finger out to the seventh fret. Remember, we're still counting from the capo. Seventh fret of the first string. We actually have two notes on the first string. So it's going to be seventh fret of first with your little finger down and then take your little finger right back up and play the first string again. Then we're going to slide backwards on the second string. This is starting at the fifth fret and sliding backwards to the third fret. That's followed by a fifth string. And then we land on a second string in our C chord. So it's holding the C chord down. We've got two forward rolls for fill in. Five, two, one, five, two, one. So it's Is our first phrase. Let's put it together. Okay, here's our second phrase. here. So we're starting with that same old slide on the second string from the second fret up to the fifth fret. This time when we get up to the fifth fret, bring your ring finger along, fret that first string at the fifth fret, and we're going to play that. So it's a 2-1. Then extend your little finger out to the seventh fret of the first string, play that. And this is giving us the uh, relative minor chord. You can hear how it's kind of minory. And then we're going to roll here. <clears throat> that same pattern of fill in rolls that we have used is three rolls of five, two, one, starting and ending on the fifth string.
So. Then our next lick. <coughs> so this starts with a pull off. So this is kind of an awkward pull off actually. Um, I'm not entirely satisfied with it because I've never been able to put enough power behind it because we're pulling off with our little finger right here. So it's pull off from the seventh fret to the fifth fret of the first string. And then after you pull off, you play the second string. And then you're going to make a left hand position shift. So this is into a two finger F shape. This is we're heading to the four chord. So your ring finger <coughs> is going to be on the seventh fret of the first string, index on sixth fret of the second string. We're going to play the first string and do that same fill and roll pattern. Three forward rolls of five, two, one, starting and ending on the fifth string. So the whole lick. So let's put that together with the first half of our second phrase. So now we've got. up and putting uh, these first two phrases together. So we're playing from the top of the B part. Now at this point, our third phrase is a repeat of the first phrase, and it is exactly the same. We just have to bop down here to start the slide. There's no fill-in notes or anything. You just move your hand so that you can start the slide at the second fret of the second string. Play the whole first phrase through, just like you played it the first time. final phrase and this is largely the same as the fourth phrase that we played in A part. Uh, we get into it a little differently but uh, the majority of it is the same. Here's what it sounds like. <clears throat> so this is the part that is different. So it's different from the fourth phrase but it's not different from other stuff that we've done already in this break because we're using the same old slide, two to five on the second string, and then play the first string fretted at the fifth fret when you get there. Those are our pickup notes. And then <coughs> from this open first string, everything is the same as the A part first phrase. Okay, so let's put this whole fourth phrase together with those new pickup notes. Here we go. Okay, that brings us to the end of the B part. So let's put this whole B part together. Here we go. To play the B part twice as we're playing through the song. So let's do that. This is our second B part.
part means you're at the end of the song. Um, if you're going to stop playing it here, I would leave off that fifth string fill in note that we typically put on the end and instead put a strum to signify that you are at the end of the song. If you're going to go back around and play it again, like if you're looping it around for practice, do put that fifth string in and that, that will lead you right back into the pickup notes for the A part. All right, we've learned the whole thing now, so we have to put it together from the top. So here we go with two A parts and two B parts. One, two. Okay, before I let you go, I do want to run through the chords. Now, um, from what I have been able to pick up through listening, I feel like the chords on the recorded CD version of this <coughs> are slightly different than the chords in the live versions of this. Um, so I'm have I'm opting to use the chords from the live version because it stays consistent throughout the song and <coughs> you don't have to remember any different uh, chords for any different parts of the song. So we're in the key of D. The chords that we are using are D, <coughs> B minor, G, and A. So I'm using my F shape D chord at 10, 11, and 12. To get to the B minor, I'm just staying in this position, take my ring finger and drop it to the second string. Oh, okay, so when I said 10, 11, and 12 there, I was no longer counting from the capo because <coughs> it's way down there, down the neck. I'm talking about real uh, frets now. Here, so B minor, right there. I'm using the D-shaped <coughs> G chord at real seven, eight, and nine, and the D-shaped A chord at real um, nine, 10, and 11. Okay, so the chords for the A part go like this. Starts out in D. Da da D D D D D D D. Now to B minor two three four and G two three back to D D D D D D D. Now to G two So while I was vamping that through, I realized that the chords for the A part and the B part are the same. So that pattern is going to repeat through the whole song. So let's break it down a little bit more. It starts out in D and there's eight D's to start. So it's D, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight. That's the whole first phrase. Then it goes to B minor for four and G for four in the second phrase. So it's B minor, two, three, four, then G, two, three, four. And then we go back to D for another eight. D, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then the last phrase is four A, four D. A, two, three, four, and D, two, three, four. Okay, so let's vamp it through a couple times. I'm gonna sing the words over it to uh, keep your place in the song. <clears throat> so keep in mind that the words um, accompany the melody for the A part and then the B part does not have any words. But because the chords are the same, we'll just vamp through a couple of the verses and uh, I assume you'll be able to pick it up from that. Okay, so here we go. John Henry had a woman, Polly Ann, Polly Ann. When John was sick, Polly drove steel. same chords over and over throughout the whole song. So there you have it. That is the lead melody break as well as the vamping for Polly and Samford.